Okay, so what I'd like to do now is I'd like to go ahead and um, summarize some of the uh, material that you've learned so far by helping you with filling out your notes packets. Um, so first off, uh, up here at the very top, it just asks you, these are the four major regions of the appendicular skeleton. And so it asks you to start just by reminding yourself of what are the bones within that region. So for example, the pectoral girdle, well, we're going to list the clavicle and the scapula. Okay. Uh, and I misspelled clavicle there, but it should be all Okay, so clavicle and scapula, and then just straight from your textbook to think about the function of this region. So for the pectoral girdle, it helps you position the shoulders and serves as a base of movement for the arms. Okay, so those bones right there serve as a place to anchor my arm so I can then move it. Okay, so that's what it's talking about. Um, I'll let you go through and see, test yourself to see if you can list the other bones in each of these locations. The upper limb, uh, of course, manipulating objects, huge function for us as, uh, as humans to be able to have um, done the things in our history that we've done. So manipulating objects and also it helps with movement. Uh, the pelvic girdle, it's going to protect uh, things from impact uh, that are in those regions. Uh, it's going to provide some structural support, so help holds it up, holds things in, in place. Okay, and the other thing that it's going to do is going to transfer the weight of the body to the legs. Okay, so that's an important place. The weight of our body goes along our vertebral column, then across that pelvic girdle down to the lower limbs. Okay. Um, and so the lower limbs, they are ultimately, whenever we're standing upright, they're bearing the weight of the body. Uh, so that's a very important function of those lower limbs. And as well, they're important for movement, for locomotion. Okay, legs are the main thing for that. Now, as you learn the bones, um, it's important that you able you are able to understand where these bones are in space so that you could visualize these bones that you know what parts of the bone are on the front what parts are on the back what parts are medial what parts are lateral um, and so you really need to be able to picture those bones in your head and so what I've done is I've given you a series of pairings here for you to go through and see um, can I put uh, these pairings in the right order? Can I visualize them enough to know which one's medial, which one's lateral? Okay, um, you have other pairings, superior versus inferior, and then the final pairing is anterior versus posterior. Um, so I'll start just with um, one of these. Uh, let's start with the uh, right here for the femur head versus tro greater trochanter. Um, so what I would suggest you do to try and figure this out is uh, go to your textbook. So for example, here's a picture of the femur. Uh, pay attention to these things at the bottom. So right here it tells you this is an anterior view. So right here you're looking at the front side. Okay, this one tells you it's a posterior surface. So you're looking at the back side. All right, um, and then uh, over here it tells you, well, you're looking at the right femur. So in both cases, you're looking at the front side and the back side of the right femur. Now, the next thing to do is to find, well, what are those markings, pairings that I ask you to look at? Well, the head, which is right here, versus the greater trochanter. Okay, um, it's helpful in the book because they give you the bone here in red, so you can kind of look and see, can I tell um, how this bone is positioned, okay? So here's the right femur, okay? And you notice this head, it looks like it's sticking in up against the hip bones. It's actually helping to form that hip joint, okay? And so... And then it looks like this bump over here, which is that greater trochanter, is more lateral. 
So in this case, the head would be medial and the greater trochanter would be lateral. And so if we go here, we put head, you can put M, or if you prefer to write it out and put medial, that's fine. And then the greater trochanter is lateral, um, and that's that pairing. And so I would suggest that you go to each one of these, think about an anatomical position, how are these bones located, look for the surface features, and then start to visualize this skeleton in your head. That's going to be incredibly important for being able to um, understand the, uh, the, uh, the skeleton and to be able to do well on the exam that visualization. Okay, um, then the other thing I'd like to see you start visualizing is I'd like to see you start visualizing how these bones go together. Okay. Okay, and so for our first joint, um, and again this is something that's going to help you start to visualize the skeleton in your head. Okay. So it asks you for the joint at the medial side of the collarbone. Okay, well you can even think about on yourself. Well, my collarbone's right up here. The medial side is going to have to be in here. Lateral would be way out here. So first we want to think about medial side. Okay, and so again my suggestion is use your textbook. And so here we can go to the textbook on page 244, and it actually shows you the clavicle. Okay and it shows you a joint, meaning where two bones are coming together. And so on the medial side would be right here. And you say, well, um, first it's asking you what are the bones at that joint? Well, we have a clavicle, and wow, this sure looks like the sternum to me. Okay, So that would be the first thing you, you would put, as you'd say, it involves the clavicle and the sternum. And those would be the two bones. And then the second part here asks you, okay, what are the bone surface features that actually come together, that actually are going to be uh, close to touching each other? And again, if we look back at our book, well, it looks like this feature right here, okay, and if we look, this even tells us medial, lateral, looks like the surface feature that would be touching right there is the sternal end. Okay, so the clavicle, and we could say the sternal end. Well, which part of the sternum is that? Uh, you may need to go back to chapter 7 and look at the parts of the sternum, but hopefully you remember that this part up here is called the manubrium, and this little indentation right here that looks like it's touching the clavicle is going to be the clavicular notch. And it's kind of helpful that the surface features actually make sense. The sternal end is the part touching the sternum, the clavicular notch is the part touching the clavicle. And that might even help you remember some of these surface feature names as you start picturing how they come together because a lot of them um, are going to be named based on what they're touching at that joint area. Okay, um, So I go through all of these uh, parts that uh, students of mine typically have trouble with. Uh, elbow joint, make a note, there's three bones at this joint. Okay, So if you're just listing two, which I often see, uh, you are missing out, so you're missing something and you need to think about how all three of those different bones touch the other, uh, other two bones. Okay, so take them one at a time and think, okay, how does this one bone touch other bone number one, and then how does it touch other bone number two? Okay, and do that for all the pairings so that you make sure that you get all of the surface features. Um, pelvic girdle. Uh, you should know there's only one place where you get an articulation, okay? And again, knee joint, uh, you're going to have three different bones there. So make sure you're looking for all of those. 
And finally, this part here, it asks the only articulation between the pectoral girdle, okay, which is clavicles and scapula, uh, and the axial skeleton uh, occurs between, and the only place that happens is the clavicle and the sternum. Okay, if you look at how that shoulder blade, that scapula, is sitting on the ribs, a lot of times you might think that there has to be an articulation between the scapula and the ribs. But in fact, there's so much muscle packing around um, that bone that there is no actual uh, joint between the bones. Okay, so it's kind of crazy to think that this place right here where the clavicle meets up with the sternum, that is the only place where there is a bone uh, to bone anchor of the arm, okay, to your midline part of your body. Um, but clearly there's a lot of muscle mass that goes across and helps stabilize it. And we'll talk about in joints how um, really you are always are having this balance between um, stability and range of motion. And uh, so um, that's, that's going to be part of it. Okay, and so that is um, axial skeleton. Uh, you should have um, some activities here that help you familiarize yourself with some of the vocabulary in this section.